Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. I'm Society Sucks and today I'm checking out Scientists Can't Explain This New Discovery by Kultzgeza. No idea what this video is going to be about, we'll just have to see. Our best theory of the universe could be wrong. Finally, we're going through an incredibly exciting is moment. Is the Big Bang Thanks not real? To amazing new technology, our understanding of the universe is moving faster than it has in years. And, if we're fortunate, we could be at the edge of the next revolution in the way we see the cosmos. A moment as exciting as when we first realized that the Earth revolves around the Sun, that the stars are other suns, and not or the other that our way around. Is just one tiny island in an ocean of trillions. Why do we think this? Just how tiny because and insignificant ages, we really are. The universe is misbehaving badly. Nasty universe. For decades, we've what? had a beautiful theory of the cosmos. One that explained how the universe began, what it's made of, and how it's supposed to behave. It matched Just our keep observations growing, astonishingly expanding. well, and made us feel like we'd almost deciphered the cosmic code. But in the last few years, as our telescopes got better and our data sharper, cracks started to appear. Strange mismatches between what the theory predicted and what we actually saw. And the At theory first, is no longer accurate. Like silly mistakes, noise that would go away with more data. But as new data came in, the opposite happened. Some cracks got Even larger, more cracks. new ones emerged, and our once perfect picture of the cosmos began to look less and less perfect. Of course, this wasn't new. Two centuries ago, astronomers noticed that Uranus's orbit didn't quite follow the laws of gravity. But instead of throwing those laws away, huh? they proposed that a dark planet was tugging on Uranus from afar. Shortly after, Neptune was discovered exactly where the math said it would be. But then came Mercury. Its orbit also didn't make sense, so scientists tried the same trick. But this time, no new planet showed up. The answer wasn't more stuff, but a completely new idea. Gravity had to be reimagined, and we invented general relativity, opening a whole new dimension in our understanding of the universe. So are we going through a Uranus moment, or a Mercury one? Possibly. First crack. Cosmic monsters. The first signs that monsters. something deep could be off began piling up around 15 years ago, in the form of a few seemingly impossible cosmic monsters. A giant arc of galaxies over 3 billion light years wide. A massive group of quasars spanning 4 billion light years. A ring of galaxies 5 billion light years across. An unfathomable wall of galaxies stretching 10 billion light years from end to end, a whopping 10% of the entire observable universe. The list goes on. That's not all. I mean, there are also can't these all just be coincidences? Voids, vast cosmic deserts with far fewer galaxies than normal. And according to some surveys, like we happen void? to be living deep inside one of them. A gargantuan local hole, what? we happen to be living deep far fewer galaxies than normal. And according to some surveys, we happen to be living deep inside one of them. A gargantuan local hole, two billion light years across. Where's the problem? Well, wouldn't that technically... I mean, actually, would that be good or bad? If we're just in a giant hole, technically... Less things that could possibly collide with Earth and destroy it. But at the same time, if we somehow in the future manage to achieve space travel to different galaxies, well, there's no, there's no many places to go since we're in a giant void. The universe is organized in ever larger structures, galaxies, galaxy clusters, superclusters, and eventually filaments, truly gargantuan structures separated by equally enormous voids. But our cosmic theory says that these things can't get arbitrarily large. At distances beyond 1 billion light years or so, the filaments and voids should blur into a uniform soup. And this is more than a technical detail, it's a basic pillar of all our attempts to make sense of the cosmos itself. Our understanding of the universe rests on one key assumption, the cosmological principle. This is the idea that if you zoom out far enough, the universe should be uniform, looking the same everywhere. This I mean, is I, crucial because it means that our know. limited view of the cosmos is a fair sample of the whole. That even if we are tiny creatures living in a speck of dust, we can learn things about the entire universe. Both the cosmos itself and our place in it might be more unruly and chaotic than they should be. I mean, we don't but even know how big the universe really is. Wrong, we have a huge problem. Because if the universe isn't the same everywhere, we could be like ants trying to guess the flavor of a cake while sitting on its only cherry. 
everything we see might just be local weirdness, a cosmic quirk that doesn't tell us the actual story of the universe. I mean, that's true, but... Second crack... How would you ever know? At two speeds. The next crack appeared about 10 years ago. It tore straight at the fabric of space, challenging how fast it grows. Every second, the universe gets a little bigger. We know this because we have different ways to measure it and all confirm that space is expanding. The problem? They can't agree on how fast. It's like measuring the speed of a car using two devices and getting different results. You read 67 on the speedometer, but 73 on the GPS. One of the instruments must be broken, right? But then you check them again well, and again and again. Technically, and no, they don't have to be broken. Flawlessly. This is very much what happens with the universe. The details are messy and complicated. I'll just take an example that I have from real life. When I was driving, on the speedometer, it said I was going 60 kilometers per hour. But on my GPS, it said I was going 55, 5 kilometers slower. But they don't matter for this story. The important part is that, as measurements and calculations have become more and more precise, the disagreement has only become worse. It's only gotten now, worse? The chance that this mismatch is just an accidental fluke is less than one in a million. The universe is literally giving us two different answers to the same question. So, so... something fundamental must be broken. Either... I mean, if you get two different answers, just add them and then divide them by two to get the average. Our measurements of the universe, or our basic understanding of it. Third crack, old galaxies in a baby universe. The latest surprise is only about three years old. It shattered a key part of our cosmic timeline, how and when the first galaxies formed. Telescopes act like time machines. Light from distant galaxies takes so long to reach us that we don't see them as they are now, but as they were in the past. In yeah, 2021, we launched the James Webb. The most I mean, the light that reaches us takes so long to actually reach us that many of the stars we see are probably already burned out, dead. This powerful space telescope ever built, and almost immediately, it began finding bright, massive galaxies so distant that they belonged to a time when the universe was extremely young. The problem? Some are so premature that they date back to 280 million years after the Big Bang, far earlier than anyone expected. Yeah, that's not Our a long time. theory says that the amorphous soup of matter that emerged from the Big Bang gave rise to the first galaxies through a long chain of mergers. Tiny lumps of dark and normal matter gathered under gravity, building larger chunks that then fused into even bigger ones, and so on. But this process is lengthy. By our best estimates, the first large galaxies should have emerged 500 million years after the Big Bang or so, not much before. But it isn't only that we found large galaxies existing way before that. The new galaxies also seem to be too mature. Matter in the baby universe was made up almost entirely of hydrogen and helium. Heavy elements like carbon or nitrogen were only forged later in the cores of stars, which had to explode to release them. But some of these super-early galaxies contain a lot of heavy elements, meaning that entire generations of stars must have lived and died even before them. So this is like finding grown-up so, kids in a kindergarten. I mean, yeah, Either the, first the theory we had before was just completely wrong then. Or we're missing something huge about the infancy of the universe. From cracks to crisis. We do have to consider that as technology advances, we get more accurate data, so these theories were created on data we had previously with, te with technology that was inferior. So obviously the results maybe were wrong or just not as accurate. What we're seeing now is probably going to be completely inaccurate in like 10 or 20 years, just like how our previous theory is now turning out to be completely wrong. These problems aren't the only ones. Our theory also says that the Big Bang should have created three times more lithium than we see out there, a decades-old itch that astronomers just can't scratch. It predicts that dark matter should pile up sharply at galaxy centers, but instead we find gentle hills. It says that dark energy, the mysterious force pushing the universe apart, has stayed constant since the Big Bang. But last year, one of the biggest galaxy surveys ever conducted dropped the bombshell that it may have been changing over time. If true, this would overturn our current picture of the universe, its past, and its future. And it could very Even well just be random. Even things that we considered settled beyond any doubt, like the interpretation of the cosmic microwave background, are suddenly up for debate. 
Those early galaxies might have been bright enough to contaminate the signal. These are bold claims that require much more evidence, but the mere fact that such fundamental pillars are being discussed is staggering. So, okay, what does all this mean? Right now, there are furious battles going on. Some scientists argue that these aren't real cracks, but mirages that will disappear with time, or raw gems that will end up refining our theories. Others are more radical and say we need completely new ideas. But whatever the case, the big picture is difficult to ignore. The sense of crisis is growing. And for the first time in ages, we don't really know what cosmology will look like when the dust settles. Which is amazing because Everything in is science, change completely. crisis doesn't mean failure. It means that the machine is healthy and working. Science doesn't move in a straight line, but in cycles. Periods of calm followed by sudden crises. When a crisis hits, experiments start giving results that don't fit existing theories. Confusion grows and strange ideas So you ideas make new pop theories. Up. And eventually, there is a revolution. A deeper truth emerges and a new cycle starts over again. The universe is screaming that our story is incomplete. Whether we'll find a cosmic Neptune or a cosmic Mercury, one thing is certain, the cosmos is about to get a lot more interesting. Okay, so theories we had before are no longer completely accurate. They just don't make sense. There's inaccuracies, cracks, because our technology has advanced. So we're getting more new evidence, which contradicts what we believed before. And as our technology advances even more, we're probably going to contradict what we found out in the last two or three years. And that's going to turn out to be wrong. It's inevitable as, a, as technology advances and you get more accurate data, theories will be disproven or they will have to be changed. I mean, the Big Bang itself, it's a theory. It's just a theory. Nobody truly knows how the universe actually started. Because how the fuck would you even prove that? We don't know how big it, the universe is. We don't know how old it is. I mean, some of these measurements prove that Galaxies apparently appeared way before they should have. Hell, the universe supposedly is constantly getting bigger and growing. But what if it isn't? Fuck, how do I say, how do I properly word this? The data based on which people say that the universe is constantly growing. What if that's something else completely? What if we just interpreted it wrong and the universe actually isn't growing and that's just something that's causing movement, which makes it seem like it's growing, even though it actually isn't. Maybe that's how it is. No one really knows. I highly doubt we'll ever find out the universe's secrets. Humanity will most likely go extinct before we do. But luckily this really isn't something... It's not something important for the average person. The average person can live their life just fine without knowing the secrets of the universe. I do love finding out new stuff about... About our universe, galaxies, everything. I love space. I'm glad they made another video on this kind of topic. I will say that Kuzgazak's best videos are the ones they make on space. They're just the most interesting for me personally. And yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know what else to say here. Perhaps everything we knew is just a lie. Well, not necessarily a lie, just a theory we made, which turns out to not be true. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. If you want to see more reactions, check out this video right here. And with that, I hope I'll see you in the next video.